What's that you say? You're ready for some more C Sharp programming? There is nothing I love more than a programming session first thing in the morning. It is like 5 o'clock in the morning East Coast time right now and I'm feeling good. Maybe it's the whole pot of coffee that I had or the great day that I have planned ahead of me, but I'm not quite sure. I'm willing to bet that it's because my day is starting off doing some computer programming which is my favorite thing in the whole entire world to do. So anyways, I sure hope some of you share my enthusiasm for computer programming because now we're going to get into one of the important pieces of the whole object-oriented concept and that is the method. So this is going to add modularity to our program. Even though C Sharp has that built into it, this is going to be the first time you actually see it in an easier to see way. So methods in C Sharp are pretty much exactly the same as functions are for all you C programmers. Let's take a look. Make a new project. Windows. Empty project. Let's call this methods. Select OK. Once your method project loads, you know what to do. And I know I keep doing this, but this is just repetition is practice. The code file that we're going to do is we're going to do, we're going to call this, um, let's do a, uh, a sort array a sort array method. So we're going to create our own very basic, very inefficient sorting algorithm. So we're going to start off with using system and then we're going to create the class. We're going to call this sort array and then within this we're going to have the public static void main function. Alright, control F5 just to test it. Everything is lovely. Alright, we, we discussed earlier about these classes. Now, you can have different functions and different classes, but I'm not really ready to talk about that just yet. We're just going to deal with the main class that we're using, which is the sort array class. Let's create some separators, just a line of asterisks, so we can uh, have a break between our functions, because this can get pretty messy. And I'm sorry, I say functions, but I mean method. I apologize. So, this method is going to be public, because we want to make sure that everybody can have access to it. So, the main function can access this directly. If it was private, then other functions would have to access it for the main function. So we're just going to call this public, and this is going to be a void function, and it's going to be load array, and we're going to take an integer array, and we're going to break it off, just like that. So the very first function that we're going to create, the very first method that we're going to create, is going to create an array of integers. And I'm sorry, int, I have to do, do int, and we'll call this just a, it doesn't really matter. And if we do control F5, it should maybe not work. So I have errors, and what is this? I'm sorry, I have to do it like this. Let's see what, if that works. And it does. When I'm passing an array, I do the array brackets first, and then the variable. So let's go back to the main function, and we'll do console.title, and we'll call this array sort. And after we tell the users what the name of the program is going to be, now we're going to declare an array, which you guys know how to do this, right? So we're going to do an integer array. So we'll just call this in array, because we can call it whatever we want, equals a new instance of the integer class, bracket, bracket. So let's do 20. Ladies and gentlemen, I completely forgot to add something to, to my um, function down here. I'm going to have to declare this as public static void. Okay. I apologize for that. If I don't do that, then my main function can't access this directly. And I'll show you real quick, if I don't put that static there and I want to access this function, I type load array, and you can see how Visual Studio isn't doing the autocomplete for me. But if I add the word static right here, and then I could type L -O -O, oh, look at that, the first thing that shows up is load array. So sorry about that, that's just a little syntactical difference. So then we'll send it in array, and let's compile this just to make sure it works, and it does. So now that we know that it's working fine, in here we'll do our good friend the for loop. So we'll do for, and then we'll make this a byte, we'll call it i, we'll make it start at zero, Well, i is less than, since we know that the array is going to stop at 20, we can just do that, i is less than 20, and then we'll do i++, plus plus, and then we'll do console, dot right line and then within the function we'll do a element i so we're just going to print out a element i if you don't know what that is watch the c++ tutorials control f5 so it all equals zero because nothing is added to it good excellent with load array what i'm going to do erase this and i'm going to set 
array element i equal to i. So then I can copy this code and put this up here in the main function and then just change this line a little bit. So instead of being a, it's going to be in array. And we're going to send it to the console write line. So it should load it. And you see we have 0 through 19. We can see how that array is already sorted. What if? What if we didn't want it to look like that? What if we wanted to create a random number for each array element? That way it's not going to come in already sorted like that. So here's what we can do. I'm going to come down here into the load array class, and this is just kind of a side note, learning how to do random number generators. So this is a pseudo random number, so we'll do random, we'll call the random class, and then we're going to do a variable, random class. And we're going to make this equal to a new instance of random. So this is no different than, we're, than int array. You could be like int array equals new instance of int. So the random, we're setting a variable name that is associated to the random class, and we're just creating a new instance of random. So once we've done this, instead of putting i right here, erase the i and then type this. Random class dot next function. Control F5. Look at that, we have really, really big and <laughs> big numbers. So how do we narrow this down? How do we make these numbers a little bit smaller? So we can just simply mod the, mod the numbers by the maximum number that we want. So what if I did like mod 20, control F5, this will be the numbers between 0 and 19, and uh, we see the numbers right there. So we have an array of random numbers. And if I do control F5, you can see how the numbers are different every time that we run the program. So now what we want to do is we want to create our own function that's going to run through and sort this from lowest to highest. Now the, the one that we're going to write is a very inefficient but very simple to program sort function. And there's also all sorts of references available on, uh, let's say, Wikipedia. If you take a look at sorting algorithms on Wikipedia, there's all kinds of great ones like the bubble sort, insertion sort. So if you're interested in building your own efficient sorting arrays, I'd say go check that out. But before you do that, we're going to do a simple swap sort. So we're just going to do public, and we're going to do static. And this is also going to be a void function. And I'm going to call this sort. And this is going to take in the integer array. And we're just going to call this A. And the size of the array is globally known to be 20. So if that is different, you, you can actually send the parameter for the, the length of the array. But if you know that your array is going to be a certain size, you can just assume it, which is what we're going to do here. So I'm just going to create some variables. int temp x. And then I'm going to create int temp y. So I'm just creating two variables. I'm going to, I'm going to scroll down, so hopefully you have this coded already. So I have two variables here, temp x and temp y. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a for loop. And we're going to use the integer type this time, set it equal to 0. And then this is going to be while i is less than the maximum indexes in the array, which is 20, minus 1. So we're going to be we're looking at 20 minus 1. You'll see y in a little bit. And then while it's within that range, while that condition is true, keep incrementing i. So then what we're going to do, and it looks like we have some errors here, and that's because that's supposed to be i and not int. And uh, I'm sorry, I forgot to put i here. <laughs> int i equals 0, while, I don't know why int was finished there, while i, twi int i equals 0, while i is less than 20, minus 1, i plus plus. Okay, so that should work. Alright, the test proves it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of variables. So we're going to do temp x is going to equal the current element that we're looking at. So temp x is going to equal i. And then temp y is going to equal i plus 1. So we're going to grab the current element and compare it to the following element, and we're going to see if they're greater than each other, if one's greater than the other, or if it's less than the other. And then based on that, we're going to swap it, completely start over at the beginning of the array, and keep doing that until our array is in perfect sort. So, if temp x, so if the one that we're looking at is greater than the one below it, swap them. This will make sure that the lower one stays on top and the higher one stays on the bottom. So then, the current element is going to equal temp y. So you see how we're swapping it? a i plus 1. 
And this is going to equal temp x. So we can see how we're doing a swap here. Now, set i equal to negative 1. And the reason that we're going to set i equal to negative 1 is because when we find a match here and they swap, we want to start over at the way beginning of the loop. Now, the way to do that is if we set this equal to negative 1. Because if we set this equal to 0, when we come back up here to the beginning of the loop, it's going to test this condition, it's going to test true, and then it's going to increment i. So if we set it equal to 0, then it's going to start at 1. If we started at negative 1, when i increments, i is going to equal 0. And I think we have some little squiggly lines down here because, well, we, we, sh we should probably just make a set no value here. We'll just make both of those equal to 0, and that'll shut, shut up the error. So if we do Control F5, our program works but it's not sorted because we haven't invoked the method. So once you get this programmed, I'm, I'm not going to guarantee that it's going to work the first time, but we'll see. Once you get this program, we're going to scroll up here so we have it printed out like this. But before we print it out, we're going to load the array with random numbers, which you saw. You see that. So if, if I run this again, you see how it's the numbers are completely random. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do sort and within this, I'm going to send it the array. And now when I push Control F5, when the array comes back, it should be sorted. And it is. See, look at that. In perfect sort. All right. So now we're going to have a little bit of fun with this. All right, I'm going to comment out this. So this for loop is going to be commented out. And I'm going to copy this. And I want to come down here to the sort function the sort method, and in the for loop, in the way beginning, I'm going to paste that loop in here, get rid of the comments, and I'm going to change i to x, i to x, i to x, and then we have one more i to change, x, and then the variable name here is just a. So what this should do is this should allow us to actually watch it sort. So I'm going to do control F5, and you can see how it's sorting, except for I made one mistake. <laughs> Let me close this. Okay. What we have to do is we have to clear the console screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here after the for loop, console.clear function. So that's going to clear my console screen. So I do control F5, and we can watch it sort. All right, maybe let's find a different spot for the clear console. Let's cut this and let's put it let's put it right before the for loop instead. Control F5. Since I have to cut down the frame rate on these videos, you're going to notice this a lot more. It's going to look a lot neater to you. So let me just try one more thing before I call it quits on this on this tutorial. And let me create something that's going to slow it down so we can see a little bit better. So right here, I'm just going to do, I don't know, ints. I'll do like uh, q equals 0, while q is less than, we'll do 50,000, semicolon. And then here, I'll do q plus plus. So what this should do is this should slow down, this should slow down the, the process. Control F5, I have errors. Forgot my semicolon. Control F5. It's still a little bit quick, so let's do 100,000. Control F5. It's also still a little bit quick. Let's do 500,000. See what that does. Okay, if you slow it down to that, you can see how these numbers are swapping. So let's try to find. I mean, this is happening pretty fast. All right, I have a better idea. Let's do, we have 500,000. Let's do one, one, two, three, one, two, three. Let's do a million. Control F5. All right. You can see how it's how these numbers are being moved all the way up. It grabs a number, and then it moves it up and puts it into its place. Okay, so now that we've slowed this down, we can actually watch it sort. Now, I'm going to slow this down a little bit more because, unfortunately, my computer is a little bit 
faster than it should be. So I'm going to do 10, 10 million. Control F5. Okay, so we could see how it's grabbing this number and it's putting it in its spot. So 1 has moved up here. And the next lowest is 8. The next lowest is 7. It's going to put 7 where it belongs. Then it's going to move this 5 up. And then it's going to move the next 5 up. See how it's moving up? Okay, once that's in its spot, it's going to grab the next lowest number, which is a 5. It's going to bring it up. It's going to come down here. It's going to find this 7. It's going to put it where it belongs. So the 7 is where it belongs. And then it's going to come down here and grab that. It's going to grab that 6. 6 is moving up. Six is gonna, And then it's going to come all the way to the end. And it's going to find this 4. Actually, no. Before it does that, it's going to put the 11 in its spot. Then it's going to come down here and get this 4. See how the 4 is moving up? And the 4 is going to go into its spot up here, right in front of the 5. It's going to get this 5, and it's going to put the 5 here with the other ones, and then the algorithm is going to be done. So let's watch this 5 get put in this place. And then it's going to run through and check it, and it works perfectly. So if you don't want to have to sit there and watch it, you can erase this code. I'm going to put the program back to how it was before, but I do think that uh, it is pretty interesting to watch that. So I'm going to get rid of this. Scroll back up to the main method. Erase this. Erase this. Just control F5, run it real quick. Happens that quick.